again, everybody, and welcome to Gulfstream today, and welcome to another fabulous afternoon of world-class thoroughbred action live here at Gulfstream Park. Track announcer Pete Aiello joined by ace hander camper extraordinaire Ron Nicoletti. Ten races on the card here this afternoon off the heels of a great day yesterday and a lot of carryovers and some great returns on yesterday's card. Yeah, it was a lot of fun yesterday. They bet over 500,000 new money into the rolling super high five in race number one. Pete and I were guessing about two, 300,000. We were off. Somebody really sent it in. It's a lot of fun. It was a lot of favorites and it paid uh, a good 160 bucks, I thought. Yeah, I think it would probably have paid half of that, maybe not even that much without the carryover we do have a carryover still in the rainbow six uh, somebody on this stage hit the rainbow six but it was neither i or ronnie but uh, congratulations to that person who shall remain nameless dennis <laughs> i was waiting for that thank you very much <laughs> uh, our, our cameraman did a good job on the rainbow six yesterday 10 races to get to today we kick it off with the first super high five of the afternoon in race number one one dollar the minimum wager you know the story there no carryover in the rolling super high five yeah we also got our first of two pick fives in race number one and uh, uh, as you mentioned the rainbow six it's starting to build again pete and uh, uh, it kicks in in race number five today with about uh, almost nine oh a little over ninety five thousand in that pool yeah, they're going to get to 150000 or so today, and $0.20 cents gets you involved in the Rainbow Six. And then, of course, you have $0.50 cents that can get you involved in the late pick five on the program. $0.50 cent late pick five begins on race six today. Yeah, you know, Pete, we had some rain this morning, so we're starting the day with a muddy main track and a good surf course. So uh, be aware as you put your, uh, you know, your tickets together as you move on through the afternoon. If it stays sunny like this, I'm sure that the main track is going to dry out. And turf course certainly could use some of that rain. Absolutely. Turf course could use the rain, and as you said, the sun is shining now, so expecting drying conditions throughout the afternoon here today. Let's delve right into the racing action. We'll start it off on turf. Maidens of the $40,000 variety racing seven and a half furlongs over the good turf course. We have a field of eight in here. The current favorite is Red Cat. He won't go favored. The favorite is likely outside and two steps forward. Yeah, and I used a couple of horses on my early pick five ticket in here. One being um, actually three horses in here. Renard Fox, who I put on top. Red Cat and the one you mentioned who will be favored two steps forward. Then you see two deep, three, two, and two for a, a $36 ticket this afternoon. Pete, in his first race, I went to the, I found these three horses we were just talking, I was talking about. Very uh, competitive in the spot. Renard Fox sitting on a winning performance. Returned from a layoff to finish second as the favorite against similar quality at the distance. It's Amy Tarrant and Matthew Rispoli in the saddle today. One of the horses I had on my ticket, but no, no one would I single with. Yeah, I agree. This is not a race where you can find a single. Reynard Fox had to come four wide on the outside, turning for home in that last race. The eventual winner, Gisnell, rode the rail to victory. Certainly was the deciding factor. Well, number three, Red Cat, is another expected to show more after returning from a layoff. Uh, to set the pace, fade late to finish third behind aforementioned Renard Fox. Uh, Chuck Simon is the trainer. We're going to show you a stat over the last five years. With second start back from the layoff on the turf, he's six for 33, 18%. 30% in the money, positive ROI. like this horse's chances today to be on the ticket for sure. And as you mentioned, very early in the wagering, the current 9-5 to five favorite. Yeah, Chuck Simon doing some very, very good work. He's actually 22% for the year. And I think this horse is still figuring out what exactly he wants to do with himself. Kind of reminds me of a poor man's version of Air Bueno, just taking him a while to figure out what he wants to do. You know, two steps forward is getting some class release when he drops to his 40 level after dueling for lady, finishing fifth against state-bred maiden special weight competition. But it was during the championship meet on March 11th, the trainer's Mark Cassidy. Tyler Gaffleone's going to make the, this horse take more money I prefer to watch a race before I would put this horse on top. Yeah, I would agree with that assessment, especially if the morning line holds and two steps forward goes favored. Might want to take a, uh, take a race and see what happens there. We'll turn now to the second race. We have a heavy favorite on the morning line in race number two today. A six-horse field at five and a half furlongs. Not winners of two. The category, $12,500, the claiming level. This horse is tumbling in class. They're actually letting her letting her go for half of what they paid for. Number two, Artie's Bourbon Girl. Yeah, dropping to this $12,500 level on the main track after failing to show much when facing 20,000 maidens going five furlongs on the turf. It's the daughter of Bellamy Road, and I think she's part of the pace this afternoon. 
afternoon. But of course, it comes with some red flags to drop, you know what I mean, uh, going to the main track this afternoon. Second horse, Pete, is Mama's Flash. And I want to go back and show you this horse is cutting back to five and a half furlongs. I want to go back and show you this horse's uh, trouble last time out. Mama's Flash was the one. And you're going to see just gets steadied here. You know, just never really got to pull its head back. Just really never gets a chance to run. Was hoping that rail uh, opened up on the inside. Then comes out here, Pete, and gets another uh, more trouble. You see this horse coming out on the horse right now. Gets banged between two horses. Never really had a clear shot to run. And I thought off that performance, this one, uh, you know, should run well in here. Can Continues to close now once it gets clear sailing. Actually ends up coming up and finishing second in the race after double trouble. Well, the horse who was third in that race, Gucci Gucci Girl, is also back in this race uh, from post number four. I like that backtrack on Mama Splash. She does have some tactical speed, but based on that last race, it looks like she's figured out how to rate a little bit. That might be good news. She needs to flank Artie's Bourbon Girl. She's drawn well to do that. Let the favorite go, but don't let her go too far in front of you. Yeah, and Gucci Gucci Girl, as you mentioned, turning back to five and a half. She shipped in from Tampa. She finished third behind Mama Splash. And uh, I just thought that uh, Mama Splash had a couple of legitimate excuses in there, especially that uh, one going coming out of the turn where it looked like that horse was trying to find a seam on the inside and just got shut off. Well, we'll turn now to the third race of the afternoon. Race number three is on turf at one mile. These are claimers of the $30,000 variety, a field of seven signed on to go to post. This is a tough race because the morning line choice here, Vera's finally has been off form her last three races, but she still looks like she's one of the horses to beat in here. And a horse like Cowboy's Princess is the complete opposite. She's on the rise going for four in a row. Yeah, she's the only four-time winner in the field. And as you mentioned, stepping up, turning back to a mile after posting her third consecutive victory here. But... She got away with tepid early fractions last time out and stole that 10,000 condition claimer on the front end. And that going a mile and a 16th, I still think, of her current form. And you mentioned Vera's finally uh, maybe going the opposite way. I put Cowboy's Princess on top, and I split him with the five Kenetra. This one is making her return after a pair of promising turf outings here. She finished second against 15 optional claimers in June and then was second again at the $30,000 level in July. It's Ralph Nix, Cornelio Velasquez. This horse has license to run well in this return to action. Yeah, she hasn't been worse than second in her last five races, talking about the five Canetra. Going back to Cowboys Princess, I agree with you that she did win that last race because she got a soft lead. But if you go back to her race five starts ago, she came from well off the speed. Uh, I don't think she needs the lead. I think two of those three wins where she was on the lead, she got the lead because they went slow. As you can see, 25-51, 24-50, three quarters and 14. Two starts ago, they did did go faster. She sat and kicked anyway. Yeah, and we mentioned at the top of the show that the turf course list is good, so there might be a little bit of a cut in the ground today, and uh, might see horses going up there, not setting the usual glib early fractions that they normally do. Vera's finally, you mentioned a three-time turf winner, wheeling back, same level and distance. Stalked and faded to finish seventh last time out. Steve Claceres, MCL Jaramillo in the saddle. Well, Tearless is the other horse who figures to factor here. She's taking a major step up in class when you're talking about three-time and four-time winners like Vera's finally and Cowboy's Princess. She was game in victory last time out. Eddie Castro picks up the call for Sandra Slivka. That would be the fringe player in this race. Yeah, eight to one on the morning line, and those are the type you like to have on your early pick five ticket or thereabouts. Well, let's turn now to the fourth race, Maidens of the $35,000 variety. These are the older horses in post going three and up in this race. The morning line favorite is a horse who is likely to go favorite. I agree with that, Eri Dios. Eri Dios ran very well in the debut at even money, set the pace to be fourth in that race, but a horse who ran deceptively well was number six, Av Caesar, in his debut run. Want to take a look and show you that last race, Ronnie. I think I can sell you on the chances of Av Caesar based on the start of the race. Av Caesar is going to hop at the beginning. We'll show you that now. So that's already not good. First time starter, you see a little stutter step out of there. It brings up the rear in the early stages. Now watch this move. Av Caesar is going to the eventual winner is Giant Inca, who is on even terms with him. Av Caesar is going to make a big run towards the lead now and uh, going to get out kicked by Giant Inca. But that's all right because Giant Inca ran very well in that race and then backed it up while coming up uh, off, of the, off of this victory and then actually winning again. So I thought it was a great run by Av Caesar, made a nice little middle move there, got outrun by a better racehorse who came back to win again. Av Caesar learned something from that race. And to me, he's a viable alternative to the favorite. Yeah, I mean, I have this horse on my 
my ticket for all the reasons you just shown and mentioned there in second of Caesar. But I did go with the five horse on top, looking to make amends after dueling for the lead, weakening to finish fourth as the even money favorites career debut at this level and distance. Hey, that was on a wet track listed as good. And that's what our main track is sort of listed today. Muddy, Ralph Zadie, Edgar Zayas, the Zadie bond going really well. But I'm in total agreement with you with the six horse. Would not leave that one on. Now, the horse I had in third is the horse that scratched out of this race, and that's for Summer Scamp. So I went to three star stone, turning back to three quarters. He went up, he pressed the pace, he finished third behind a next out winner called Brave Enrique going a mile last time out. Why not run well in here with Luca Panici in the saddle for Ron Gaffney? One of the horses I added, small field of five here, but uh, we give out three selections. And this horse, not originally on my ticket, but I, I moved it up with the scratch. Well, you said he ran third behind Brave Enrique, who came back to win. When he came back to win, he beat Ari Dios. That's mm -hmm. the race that the uh, favorite is coming out of as well. The plot thickens. Indeed it does, and it'll thicken more right after this brief timeout. We're talking the Rainbow Six. When we come back, don't go away. Next January, 12 horses, a million dollar buy-in for a $12 million purse. It is the world's richest race. It is the Pegasus World Cup. We're back now with a preview of race number five on the program. Once again, welcome to Gulfstream today. Track announcer Pete Aiello with Ron Nicoletti getting ready to take you through the Thursday Rainbow Six sequence. It begins with a tough race. Race number five on turf at five furlongs. An allowance option reclaiming event for the Phillies and Mares. And I like the way you're going in here, but this is tough to single. Did you single in this race? Yes, I did. And that's with the <laughs> number eight horse, Summer Ray. I want to get it off to bang. My singles have been going good lately. It's the rest of the card I'm having trouble with. The three deep, three deep four three and two forty three dollars and twenty six and i'll tell you why i, I just thought summer ray was in a really good spot uh, back in action after a couple of solid sprint uh, here during june in which he defeated thirty thousand dollar condition claimers on the second and then set the pace and finished second at this level and distance on the 24th of june trainer ralph zetti has edgar's eyes rationing her speed i thought she had a tactical advantage coming off the layoff the barn is going good really respect the uh edgar's eyes on horses that uh, compete like this so that was my reason for singling there i mean there's a couple other horses that you can go and use in this race like miss world venezuela and harlan's darling but uh i'm gonna single here so i can make my ticket affordable well you have to cross and clear but certainly number eight uh the bad your choice here summer race she's run really well on the turf she started three times on turf and run exceptionally well all three times miss world venezuela has never really run a bad race she's run five uh, races she's been in the top two four or five times yeah and she was second behind summer ray back in one of those races i was mentioning in june on june 2nd renews the battle as you mentioned second back-to-back -back sprints at this level and distance now harlan's darling who broke her maiden sprinting on the dirt is coming back to five eights on the grass after stalking the pace and finishing there a drifting second if you remember that race that was in the one mile seventy five thousand dollar our dear peggy but it was last october ralph nix i want to show you a stat on ralph nix over the last five years with a longer than 180 day layoff on the turf he's four for 30 13 percent only 30 percent in the money but a good positive roi two dollars and 52 cents which makes me believe he had a couple of bombers when doing this angle here but harlan's darling what do you think pete of harlan's darling's chances coming back turning back I think she's got to need one. She hasn't raced since last October. This is a tough spot to bring a horse back in, in the sense that she is cutting back off of her last race, and she's dropping from Stakes Company. But these are five furlong course specialists, including number one, I Will Be Free, who did not make your top play. She's won two of her last three races. She was beaten a length and a half by Silver Sachet two starts ago. Cornelio Velasquez takes the call. He's familiar with her. He was aboard for that second place finish. So what do you think? Do we uh, pancake it out or not? No, I don't want... Well, I mean, I guess I should throw it to you. We didn't do one yesterday. No, well, I... I, I 
believe me, this is not the race I just thought. Okay. I thought all you right. were setting me up for that. No, That's no, all. no, 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 no. No problem. Another horse that has a chance is number two, Christus Persona. She's been a good uh, third in each of her last two races behind some of these rivals. Maybe she doesn't win it, but she should be part of the exotics. And don't forget about the three love flute. I know we're talking about just about everybody in here, but I think it's this kind of race. If you get by your single, love flute's won each of her last two races at this trip. She gets a steep class test here today. Yeah, and love flute just been in great form. And uh, if you look at all the uh, past performances of five furl and turf races, uh, she seems to be involved in a lot of those lately. So love flute certainly uh, should be somewhere on your ticket if you go deep or if you're in agreement with me, do you single summer Ray? Pick the tough spot, tough spot to do it, but I'll know right away if I'm going to hit this rainbow six right after they cross the wire in race number five. Well, let's turn now to race number six. Race number six, not wonders of two, the category $6,250, the level here. We're going a one-turn mile, and that is, is an intriguing component of this race for me. Posador's only victory came at two turns. However, he does have a good second at one turn, three starts ago. Yeah, you know, he's shortened up to the one-turn mile, as you said. He's adding blinkers today is why I went this way. Following his 10,000 maiden victory, as you mentioned, at one mile and one sixteenth, he stalks the pace, drifts a little bit through the lane and finishes third at this level, again, at a mile and a sixteenth. So uh, if you're not aware and you're just starting to follow us here at Gulfstream Park, a mile and a sixteenth is two turns with the first First finish line and a mile is a one turn race here. Yeah, that's definitely a key consideration here. Number two, Huge Tone is the key contender if you're trying to beat Posador. And I want to show you his last race, Huge, or not his last race, excuse me. His last race is a complete throwout. I want to show you the race two back. I want you to see the real Hoagie, Huge Tone, and what he can do when he's got uh, a little bit better scenario for him. He did not last time out. They ran away from him that day at seven eights. Now he gets a one turn mile here this afternoon. And Huge Tone just swept up to take the lead in here after three quarters and 11 and four. He actually still has the lead past the furlong grounds, but late in the contest, he's going to get wore down by Papa Pig. Papa Pig's way out in the blue <laughs> blinkers, but look, Huge Tone looks home and cooled here at the 16th pole, and uh, I think the jockey actually probably figured that, and Huge Tone gets nailed right on the money here by Papa Pig. Now, Papa Pig would come back to run well against much, much tougher. Yeah, and you know, mentioned Huge Tone's last race, uh, you know, got beat a half length at that distance, lasted seven furlong. This one got bogged down mid-track mid in that race, finished seven and again, similar, as you mentioned, going 7-8. So Pedro Sabozo uh, going to uh, ride uh, Corrado uh, Corrales this afternoon on number two, Jugiton. And I think a lot, I'm going off that performance two back like you are, putting it on the ticket. I closed it out with the fourth street, Brilliant is stepping up to the next level. He responded to both the surface switch and the distance switch with a five-length victory, $10,000 maiden score at this one-mile distance. Maybe he's got another one left in the tank, and he, he upsets the apple cart here a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Be. That's uh, certainly a different different way to go. I think the top two in the race are Pasador and Hugueton. That's race number six, which starts the late pick five. Race number seven begins the late pick four. It's on turf at seven and a half furlongs around two turns. This is a starter allowance race for horses which have uh, started for a price of 50000 or an A other than. Uh, we have a pretty good field against the, this race, and I'm looking over your shoulder. You're going with the horse. Second start from uh, from New York, ran lights out in the debut in South Florida. Maddie's Wonder Girl. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right about this race. I thought it was a wide open affair. I could have went five deep in there, but let's start it with Maddie's Wonder Girl. Stepping up the competition, showed a fond this for the local surroundings here when she shipped from Belmont into the Michelle Nihe barn and proceeded to come win in that neck of spring in a 26 to 1 upset. It was a 35 optional uh, a condition claimer going a mile. I, I just thought that was a really nice performance, but I, I was really torn between Maddie's Wonder Girl and the six horse Swapple. Uh, this one, a lightly raced three year old a daughter of More Than Ready, has been impressive since arriving from Pimlico. Uh, the sophomore broker maiden against older horses uh, at the 45,000 dollar level and that was a troubled fifth last time out i want to go back and show you the performance on uh, august 11th for this horse swapple and you're going to see this horse coming out of the gate and is the number eight that afternoon it just gets in some you know really gets uh, shuffled back here a a and you're going to watch again just it has to go behind the place just didn't break sharply in there it got steady coming out of the gate now you're going to see this horse getting steadied again right here really have to put on the brakes and pull his head back and, and just never gets clear 
sailing. Then we're going to fast forward it after. As you can see right there, looks like the two jocks are yelling at each other or talking to each other right there, Pete. And then we're going to switch around. And I just thought this horse was never comfortable. Here, once again, the horse is still looking for race room, has to steady once again in this race. Again, looking for racing room. Now, we don't have to follow this uh, race to the wire because the horse after that, uh, you know, comes on and just basically <laughs> runs in place there. You don't want to follow it to the wire. And you know why? Why? Because we had a pancake wager oh. on that race. Oh, we you did. You had Swapple. I had Image of Rachel. We could go for round two, although I might be rolling the dice a little bit. Swapple appears to have much more of an alibi than Image of Rachel. Well, you saw that, Dan. I remember that race very clearly now about you. You know, got in a bunch of trouble in that race. Just never had a clear trip. So uh, that's entirely up to you with the pancake if you want to do it once again. We'll see if we can get Swapple to beat uh, your horse once again, Image of Rachel. I, I would like to pass, but I, I, like I said, you have the right to demand I, I partake. So. Well, I think we do one today because we didn't do one yesterday with our abbreviated fun eight race card because we had so many great uh, carryovers to talk about well, yesterday. But there you see it, 4-2, so maybe uh, I get a chance to uh, uh, get back. And it's just a fun wager, Pete, and have, a, have between each other. And the loser, when Acacia gets back here in a couple of weeks, uh, has to buy the, uh, whoever's ahead, ha behind, has to buy the crew uh, pancakes. There's the whole crew. As you can see how many there are in our crew here. So you have to save up a lot of money for that. <laughs> the crew has grown exponentially. So well, hopefully we have our social media team on site at Denny's when we were swapping in. <laughs> Yo, you can eat pancakes. That's definitely the route we're going to You know, take. Pete, I went to the inside with my third selection, Lady Coventry. She should have something major to say about the pace today when she returned from the freshening. Breaks from the rail, stretches out to a mile after drawing away defeat. 30 condition claimers going five furlongs. That was back on Independence Day. This one on the inside. Guy, you think it's going to be up near the lead? Yeah, the, the question is, can she handle the two turns? There's certainly nothing wrong with anything relating to Lady Coventry. She won well last time. I like the way she did it. So yet another contender in race number seven. Eighth race, I don't think there's that many contenders in the eighth race. And looking over your shoulder, you agree with me. This is a really good horse race, ladies and gentlemen. An allowance optional claiming event with a $44,000 purse. There are a couple horses in here that are stakes tested. I think they will continue to tackle stakes company. And my personal opinion, they'll do it with amount of, some amount of success. Wildcat Wish literally to me never runs a bad race. Hasn't ran a bad race since February of 2016 earlier in the Champions Meet. That was on turf. And High Riverside, I think this horse is awfully good. Yeah, here's the thing. I, you know, right off the bat, I'm going to say I'm going to try and beat the number five, Brown O'Malley, Mighty, who's the ninth to five favorite. I added it on my Rainbow Six ticket there. He's an obvious choice. He returns to the Peter World of Bond after a clunker on the Parks turf back in May. He's had 90 buyers when he was running. He's never been beaten on the on the Gulfstream main track. All those things are positive. I'm going to watch one and go with the horse you mentioned, High Riverside. Try and make it two in a row after following it. His narrow defeat in the seven furlong, $75,000 Trinneberg with a late running score against 16 optional claimers. Also at seven eighths of a mile stretch. And I love the way this horse has been running right lately. Yeah, So absolutely. I'll put him on top. To be honest with you, until you just mentioned that, I had no idea High Riverside wasn't the morning line favorite. Hard for me and Matt to imagine a horse who was odds on last time when winning and then uh, racing against fairly similar stock not going favored. Yeah, you know, so uh, and you know, Wildcat Wish is going to wear the blinkers, you, as you mentioned, stretches out to a mile. No wins yet, but a second and a third. First start since finishing a five wide fifth behind High Riverside in that aforementioned Trinniburg, Stanley Gold, Eddie Castro. I think this horse has some positive upside. I like the fact that they're adding the blinkers. Well, Wildcat Wish is quickly moving up the Aiello scale in terms of me being a fan of him. I just, I love horses that run well every time and he certainly is one of those and i use piloting too uh, stretching out to a mile after failing to mount the late rally and finishing sixth in the trinniburg mark cassie tyler gaffleones do I make a mis do it? Did I make a mistake by not putting the five Brown O'Malley in my top three selections? Actually went back and added it to the Rainbow Six, but I I think High Riverside is the right horse in this race. I agree with you. Let's turn now to the ninth race. Five furlongs over the turf and allowance optional claiming event. Uh, this race is kind of an interesting race in the sense that every horse in here that has a shot on the morning line or a shot on pass form has some questions that they need to answer. The question is who will answer those questions the most effectively? While Ye May hasn't been seen since the champion meet lost a duffel bag who if i remember right is another kabisky horse so lost to a stable mate last yeah time. i just find this race really intriguing i like it uh, uh, while you may is uh, my top pick now listed as a 
Mike Gelding is making his first start. Since that promising three-race campaign during the winter in which he broke his maiden at first asking, went sprinting on the grass over at Gulfstream Park West, then comes back, he's fourth in the main track behind Orson Banner in the grade three Hutchison's, and second on the turf here, going seven and a half furlongs on February 6th. Uh, trainer, you mentioned Dan Kabisky, Eddie Castro. This horse was very impressive for those, uh, you know, those three races early on, so put him on top of the ticket here. But I, I, I think this race is uh, really intriguing. As I said, you can go a lot of different ways. Yeah, you can. The number five shoot craps, major ticket. He hasn't been seen since August of, of 2015. He ran well uh, as a two-year-old, and, and we'll see how he does as a three-year-old. His last race was behind Expected Ruler. Expected Rulers came back to be a pretty salty turf sprinter, so uh, Shoot Crafts, is he ready? Alvarado gets the call on Shoot Crafts, and Eddie Castro gets a call on Wow Ye May. The only problem with that is, is they've both been winning races for Kabisky. Well, in Shoot Crafts, if you look at the past performances, it looks like they've been working in company uh, over the last two races, so I had to put, if I put one on the ticket, I felt I had to put the other on the ticket, too, in second, and I split him with final on car second on the turf here in the sixty thousand dollar fish island during april is back in south florida coming up empty in a pair of uh, uh, allowance uh, sprints on the belmont turf it's ralph nix tyler gaffleone handling that homecoming today would not be shocked to see this run good so i got two from the dane kabinsky bod splitting with the nicks well, I got one to split, maybe not to win, but I think this horse hits the ticket at a nice number. Number two, Bessemi for Antonio Sano. He was up against it last time out. His race two back is very much good enough to play a major role, maybe even win this race. He'll be forgot about in the betting. He's making his 13th start of the year. He doesn't miss many dances, but Bessemi's going to be charging hard late. Yeah, and he's got a real nice uh, 10 to 1 morning line, so a horse like that uh, you might want to use for the first half of the late daily double. Well, let's turn to the second half of the late daily double. It's the Thursday finale on turf at five furlongs claimers in at the ten thousand dollar level they've not won two and uh, number seven time out of mind is trying to shed his second itis he's been second in each of his last three yeah, and I went the other way because of that exact angle of Bay Runner now in the Monty Thomas Bond. Three-year-old son of Here No Evil plummets to the 10 level. The first start since ending his two-year-old campaign last September with a third-place finish here in the $75,000 optional claimer at the distance. Jonathan Gonzalez in the saddle. Uh, you know, seven time out of mind is going to take all the money. Got that case of second iners. Why not do a horse like this that, you know, Bay Runner, I think, I don't know, second choice in the morning line, so it's no great shakes. But I just like to, I'm going to flip-flop those. Still. Well, the good news for Bay Runner is Monty Thomas is very, very good. Jonathan Gonzalez is very, very good. The bad news for Bay Runner is he's taking a plunge in class off a long layoff after running well for much, much against much, much better. Yeah, and you got to go on that inside post after the long layoff. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I think maybe the seven finds this spot to cure the second iners. I also used the nine grand junior drop into this level after following a, a third place finish against 16 two lifetime claimers. Goes up, chases, and fades outing against 25 optional claimers dropping down to a spot where this horse can be affected. I don't know what it is on the morning line. I think 10 to 1 or something like that. Yeah, I can certainly understand the logic behind Grand Junior. Scratch the 12 in this race, so a field of 11 to go postward. Dwoskin has two in here. I don't know which one's going to run well, but I have a feeling one of them is. Starship Mars making his first start against winners after taking to the turf like a lawnmower run amok. I just <laughs> stole your line. Starship Mars was 28 to 1 that day. I like the way he did it. Panicia has the return call. Stablemate Starship Explorer hasn't been out since June. He took money in his last race. He raced against a runaway winner in Amazon King. His race two back was behind a couple of repeat winners at this level and distance. He has a chance for a minor award as well. Yeah, you know, even though I singled that one horse in the first leg of the Rainbow Six, I think it's a pretty wide open sequence and a nice carryover of $95,000 plus. So it should be another fun day. Uh, once again, remember that the main track is muddy. Turf course is good, but you're going to tell them all about that in a couple of seconds. Yeah, don't go away. We'll be back with the program changes right after this. Good luck today at Gulfstream.